the first Titan suits have been unleashed. Adding mech suits for players in any game can be a balancing nightmare. Has Star Citizen pulled it off? It's time to live out all of those aliens' power-loaded fantasies. The Atlas is in the PTU as we speak, and is now available to be spawned by all Wave 1 testers, not just the Ibukati. They don't appear to be in their final state though, so expect some details to change as we get closer to their release. The idea of armoured suits to do just about anything is enough to send most gamers a little giddy, but the reality can be challenging, to say the least. How do you make them useful and not just a walking coffin, whilst at the same time stopping them from becoming completely overpowered? Well, the Atlas cargo suit is part of the whole persistent hangers and cargo hauling updates, so it lacks any offensive weaponry or shielding at all. I had to take a moment to admire the animation taking control of the arms, and all of the locomotion animation seemed really well done. The most notable part of the Atlas, and the only real function for it right now, is its tractor beam. It has a far greater range than the handheld options, and brings the captured object directly to you automatically, whilst you get an outline of exactly where it will be placed. Click, and the object just ends up there. It's a huge speed increase for cargo loading and unloading, over using the multi-tool or the tractor beam rifle. With almost no practice, one Atlas is going to be able to empty ships or hangars noticeably faster than a couple of players working together. For anyone that's heard cargo or a vehicle inside a ship rattle around just before they and everything around them exploded, using the Atlas can be quite scary at first, but fingers crossed I haven't died a fiery death to it just yet. Speaking of watching people die in particularly stupid ways, I'm going to be back to streaming here live on YouTube on Sunday 15th of September, and every Sunday thereafter at 9pm UK time, so make sure you have notifications on, because I'll be really glad to see you. Once your cargo loading is done, hop aboard your ship and take the Atlas with you. I tried it in a whole bunch of ships, and it was fine in the, the Cutlass, the base freelancer, the MSR, the Connie, it kind of fit in the Vulture if you're feeling a little ballsy and don't mind leaving the ramp down, and it categorically will not go in the Avenger. I have to say that the Atlas has grown on me quite a bit during the testing that I did. At first I thought it looked a little bit derpy, and I kind of got a bit sad about how it was just another part of Beam Citizen and lacked any sort of physical interaction that we've been asking for for quite some time. Thinking about that got me thinking about balance and the role Titan suits will play in Star Citizen, and it's kind of changed my mind on the whole thing. As it stands, the Atlas fits really nicely into the niche that Cloud Imperium games have been promising since the game was announced having reasons for and against taking everything rather than there just being one clear meta choice. I mean, sure, the Atlas suit is faster to load and unload cargo than using a couple of crew members on foot, but it doesn't fit into every ship. And when it does, you'll often sacrifice cargo space to take it with you. A significant consideration when you bear in mind hauling missions won't always start or end in your own personal hangar. It's slow, too. I mean, at a normal run on foot, you'll easily outpace it. Right now, that's not a problem, given the proximity of freight elevators to your hangar. But, clearly, this will change when you consider many of the outpost locations. The Atlas is where we can see how the same principles might be applied to combat Titan suits. The increase in armour and larger weaponry that the Titan suit will carry can be offset by its low turning rate and movement speed and its inability to access smaller areas. To land far from their target and still be effective, Titan suits will need transports or to be landed close to their objective so that they're not ambushed or outmaneuvered and destroyed. 
I'm sure saying that Titan Suit should have a weakness will have some angry taking the comments, so please feel free to do so. Just keep it respectful. There are clearly areas with these Titan Suits that still need work, and there are still questions to be answered. There's been no Inside Star Citizen episode yet, so a lot remains unclear, like where the components, if any, will go. Whether it'll get an MFD, although there does seem to be some placeholder art on the struts either side in front of you. And whether we'll see the Titan bays from this sort of concept art. And just what the hell is this thing in the left hand? As a general rule, I try to steer clear of any sort of buying advice or buyer's guides, but I guess this thing is going to sit somewhere between $20 and $30. Whilst cargo players will be able to find a lot of utility in an atlas, it relies entirely on the player to have other ships in their fleet to be useful, because there's really no reason to have one all by itself. Any higher price point than this would be a bit of a misstep by CIG, in my opinion. I really like the idea of having the Atlas as a stepping stone on the rocky road that is a cargo career. Earning up from your small ship to buy one is a helpful tool and as a symbol of how well your cargo empire is progressing. I've got to say, the Atlas leaves me really impressed not necessarily by the model itself, but how it's subtly changing elements of the game. I now have confidence that Titan suits won't just end up being these overpowered must-haves as long as CRG keep on this trajectory. I'm leaving the one that Ninja and X-Ray 479 kindly lent me in my PTU hangar so I can try out more cargo horn and progression. Thanks fellas, I really appreciate it. You've been watching Drinkers with Gaming Problems. Thank you very much for stopping by. I'll see you soon.